Most people in Miami don't think about Overtown unless they're looking down from I-95 and happy they're driving over it and not through it. It was a, a booming black city in Overtown. Third Avenue, Second Avenue, everything was there. But this devastated neighborhood used to have one of the hottest music and nightlife scenes, not just in Miami, but in the whole country. Now, Overtown in those days was the swingingest place in this whole town. People came from everywhere to come to the Night Beat and uh, the Sir John Hotel. Uh, everybody used to come to the Night Beat in those days because that was the place to come. And that's where all the great music, and great people were performing. The Count Basies, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, everybody was any James Brown. That it was anybody appeared at the Night Beat in those days. Oh man, you talking about Las Vegas style shows? In the 50s and early 60s, Overtown was the place for black music and black stars. It wasn't like, oh, I'm a big star, you know. It, it wasn't like that. They were like, just like ordinary people. But when they came to Miami and Overtown, they could walk out of the club and walk down the streets at 2 o'clock in the morning. Lena Horne, Nat King Cole, Josephine Baker, Sam Cooke, Aretha Franklin, James Brown, Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, and many, many more made Overtown a second home. Cab Calloway owned a two-story house there in Overtown. There was a young black girl that lived in that house, in that rooming house. She ended up uh, having a, a kid, and that kid was uh, Ben Vereen. Lena Holmes lived in Miami. In fact, she went to school at a, at a, at a private school. In Mrs. Anderson I mean, Powell School, which is right behind what is now the Red Theater on the next street. Lenny Kravitz's mother. She was born in Overtown. Yeah. Roxy Roker. That's her name. She was born in Overtown. Sam Moore of the legendary Sam and Dave, soul music soul men, grew up in Overtown. The duo hooked up when Dave showed up for a talent show at the Miami Club King of Hearts, where Sam was the MC. And I'm trying to pull my foot back, because the poor guy, he's, I mean, sweat is just pouring out of him. You may have thought he would have been into the pool. And I'm trying to step back, and I don't want to take it away from him. And the microphone fell over. And when it fell over, I panicked, and they panicked, and we both fell to the floor to get the mic, like a Joe Tex kind of thing. And the audience thought that was it. Oh my God. The whole place erupted. They screaming, all right, hey, Sammy Day, oh, blah, blah, blah. The, the music was, well, you know, very gospel sounding at the time. And I ended up recording them in the 60s. Miami was an essential stop on the Chitlin circuit, and black stars were big draws at the top hotels on Miami Beach. But during segregation, they weren't allowed to sleep there, so they would go back across the bay to Overtown. Then when the Sir John came in, that's when there were a little more action came into town, because that's when they started to bring in acts like Dino Washington, and Sammy Davis used to stay there, and Nat King stayed there when he worked at the Yvonne Blue. They had to stay at the Sir John, because they couldn't stay at the beach on the beach. And the party began once they came over, because it's like, okay, I done worked for them, I done made my money, now let me enjoy <laughs> myself and my people. Now I can get down the way I want to get down. It was all packed into a seven by 14 block area just north of downtown and west of the railroad tracks. Black people weren't allowed out after dark, but being squeezed in made for musical and all kinds of heat. Overtown was small town, even for big names. But Overtown's music never exploded like Harlem Jazz or Detroit's Motown. In the 60s, as the civil rights movement and desegregation began to open things up for blacks, the I-95 and 395 freeways were built through the neighborhood. 
They destroyed hundreds of properties and displaced thousands of people. Overtown was silenced. We knew that come hell or high water, this thing would still be standing. It's still some place where we could go to for some particular thing that we could do. But then when all these changes were made, then we knew that all of that was behind us. And all we could do was perhaps tell our children and our children's children about what used to be.